Hello, hello, welcome to episode number one, the Debt 158 Flying Bulls podcast. I'm the tentative host, Kid Ekiel. I only say that because uh, we'll see how much traction this gets. Uh, we'll see how far we can take it. Um, my name's Ian, and uh, hopefully it, it goes well. You know, I, I'm i not a podcast expert. I know we have some of those uh, here in the wing, but um, yeah, I thought this would be a good idea to kind of get some information out to the to the wing and in a cool, creative way. I know a lot of us probably listen to podcasts um, either on our way to work, on our way to school. I know I listen to them on the way to ROTC um, on Tuesday and Thursdays, but you know, it can be a, a good way to get your mind off of things and you know, music gets old after a while. And let's be honest, there's like an album every three months now. Um, Lil Baby hasn't dropped in a while, so we're all kind of fiending for some more of that. Um, anyway, uh, we, we got a couple topics to go over today. Um, just me, unfortunately. I know a lot of people will probably look forward to hearing anyone but me talk um, on most days, but just me. Um, but I think we got some cool information to come out. Today will be kind of a shorter one just to get everybody acclimatized to what we got going on. And if people like it, have good feedback, then we'll keep going and we'll try and get some, some guests on here, maybe some cadre at some point. But um, that's if I can convince Major De Jesus to get on here. Uh, we'll see how hard that is. Um, but anyway, let's cover what we got going on uh, this week. Obviously, week five, five weeks into the semester. Uh, I know it's long for, for those IMT, those FTP that, that think that it sucks. This is kind of the uh, kind of the week that it gets hard. I know Colonel's mentioned some some you know some helpful tips at PT on how to keep going. There's really no answer to it. You know, you either you either want to be here or you don't, and you either put in the time or you don't, and Unfortunately, it's a long program every semester, you know, 15 to 16 weeks um, on average of ROTC can can be a little ridiculous for most of us. I know I have a, a part-time job, almost full-time outside of ROTC, um, as well as a life. Um, a lot of people, 300 class might not think so, but, you know, I do also do other things outside of it. So it's, it is a lot to balance, but I think a good tip to, to think about is just know what's at the end of it and realize why you're here is so much bigger than just going to ROTC three times a week. Um, and I like to think about that when I'm, when I'm low on motivation, as they say. Um, anyway, week five, big week for us here. We're going over AEF, uh, Air Expeditionary Forces. I know it's hard to say three times fast, um, but it's something that will be extremely important, mainly for field training, um, but also in active duty if you are called uh, overseas and you will be expected to do all of these um, AEF procedures. Uh, it's one of those things that all Air Force personnel are required to be trained on and you will be trained here uh, very well actually. Cadet Patton Court you know, has put together a great um, great couple days of AEF slash FTX this semester. We had some great ones last year or last semester, excuse me. Um, Cadet Hungel and Cadet Lamar put those out and they're a lot of fun, as you'll see. I know they're a lot of fun for, for IMT and FTP, but also for the POC. You know, we get to be role players and actors of sort. Um, so it's a lot of fun for us. So, so you put in what you want to get out. You know, if you want to stand around all day and not have fun and just kind of get through the day, it's going to be long. Uh, you, we start at, you know, your normal time, 05.30. Uh, POC are there at 05, by the way. Um, you know, just for those FTP that think we don't put in the work. Um, but you're there until what a 10 o'clock when lead lab is over so you're talking so really you're looking at you know five to six hours of you know doing nothing and if that fits your fancy if that's what you want to do then by all means like you know we're not, we're not going to stop you we might yell at you a little more we're not going to stop you um so please you know, put in what you want to get out it's a lot of fun it's, it's a lot of cool stuff you get to learn you get to play with some fake weapons um that simulate real weapons um, you get to, to, to interact with POC a lot, and, you know, it's a lot of fun. I, I recommend you really just put a lot of effort into it, and you'll get a lot out. You'll have a lot of fun. I know um, my first semester um, as a freshman, I got to pat down one of my flight commanders. And to be honest, I never thought I'd be able to get anywhere near them. But here I was telling them to lay down face first on the ground uh, in the proper way, of course, proper procedures, um, and basically took his wallet. And kept it for my own. No, I'm just kidding. Um, but no, it's a lot of fun. I really, uh, I really recommend you. You really focus on it. Take good notes. 
and just be attentive and, and put in what you what you want to get out uh, at the end of the day. Um, so a couple of the subtopics for AEF that I had written down were just some of the, the things you're going to focus on on Thursday. Um, tactical combat casualty care, TCCC. Um, and again, I'm getting all my information here from the uh, uh, online. You can find a lot of inf good information there, as well as the um, op board that was sent out um, by Ken McLean earlier this week. Um, it has like, some great information in it. That's where I'm, I'm studying up on that before tomorrow. Um, if you're listening to this on Thursday or Friday, it's a little too late for that. But uh, never too late for FTX. So we'll have another one of these days later on in the year. Make sure you're ready for that. Um, TCCC, uh, Tactical Combat Casualty Care. It's what it sounds like. Um, you know, it's it's basically uh, giving care to a patient uh, in the in the battlefield, right? You've got care under fire uh, and tactical field care, and that's kind of two um, of the big uh, topics to cover for TCCC, right? Are you getting shot at, and are you not getting shot at? That's kind of the big difference between the two. Um, and there's again, I'm not going to go too deep into it, but there's some different methods you're going to use while you're getting shot at, right? You want to suppress the enemy first, then take care of the casualty. Um, regardless of, of how wounded they are, unfortunately, you, you have to take care of the of the contact in front of you before you can uh, take care of the patient. That's number one priority is your safety first. Um, building clearing, that's kind of one of those things that's not really covered um, too much. Uh, we only used it once at field training for my shell. I can't speak on other shells. Um, but in reality, it, it's quite important. Um, Think about it if you're in urban terrain, you know, whether it be Iraq, Afghanistan, um, maybe coming up the Ukraine, you know, wherever it might be, um, you know, you're going to have to utilize these things in an urban, in an urban environment. It's not just going to be open fields, unfortunately. You're not just going to be bounding all the way to your target. Um, there will be buildings and there will be structures you have to get in, you have to clear out before you can proceed with the mission. Um, so again, building clearing is a big part of it, and also ECP, entry control point. That's a huge part of uh, of AEF. Um, basically, think of MacDill Air Force Base. The only way you can get through there is going through that gate and those um, big concrete blocks in front of the base, right? Barbed wire, whatever it might be. That's an entry control point. They're trying to facilitate the entry and exit uh, of personnel and civilians to and from the base. And again, they're making sure that all personnel and civilians are cleared before they enter the base. They don't have any weapons, anything, uh, weapons on their person, in their vehicle. Um, make sure they don't have any prohibited materials. Make sure they don't, uh, they don't have warrants for their arrest, right? They have proper IDs, proper identification. Um, and, and again, that's just but common sense, right? You don't want terrorists coming onto your base. So that's why we use ECP. Um, Obviously, in the real Air Force, those are mainly controlled by security forces, SECFO. Um, they do a fantastic job at it. That's, that's what they're trained to do. Um, but again, we are learned and we are taught how to do it, just in case we're called, called to action. Um, IED, UXO, and bounding. Obviously, IED, Im, impro I'm sorry, improvised explosive device. Um, you know, if you've seen any movies shot post, um, probably post 9-11, there's, a, there's been an emphasis on IEDs. It's been a, a huge weapon for terrorists uh, around the world. Um, and again, this could be anything from a pipe to a box, like a little cardboard box or a tire or whatever it might be. Um, you can use anything, unfortunately. Um, and they're very hard to spot in most cases. Um, that's probably one of the biggest things about IED and UXO is they're very hard to spot. Um, so there's some procedures you're going to use when locating um, an, I, an IED or UXO and basically determining what to do from there. Um, first you want to find out are there other IEDs in the area? Are they connected? Um, how is it going to be triggered? And then you take care of it. Call it in. Get the bomb defusal guys out there to deal with it. And if they can't, what are your next procedures? That's what you're going to learn. And last, land nav. Um, land navigation. It's uh, probably the most self-explanatory uh, one on this list. Um, but don't think of don't think into it too much um, again you're just learning basic land navigation uh, how to get from one point to the other uh, with the use of just a map and a compass um, it's pretty fun if there's any Pirates of the Caribbean fans out there uh, you're basically Johnny Depp walking around with a compass in front of your face no, I'm just kidding um, that would be pretty cool though 
So let's move on. Why we use AEF, that's one of the topics I have here. Uh, again, I've already mentioned it. Um, it's very important on active duty that you know how to, how to use these procedures um, if you're called to do them. I know, um, you know, security forces normally takes care of it, but uh, we don't want to rely on them all the time. If, if we're called to action, you know, we need to be able to step in and help and aid those security forces, um, troops, and, and help them do what they need to do. Uh, so let's move on. Moving swiftly from AEF, we're going to switch gears a little bit. Talk about AFA, Air Force Association Symposium. Now, AEF is a fantastic event that they hold um, every year. Unfortunately, it's been canceled because of COVID uh, the last year. Um, but the last time we went was spring 2019, uh, 2020. I'm sorry. I, yeah, it was just before COVID, if I, my memory serves me correctly. Um no, it wasn't. I'm sorry. It was the year before. It was our uh, our freshman uh, our freshman year, um, or the 100s. It was our the spring semester of 2019, I guess. 2020. I don't know. Dates are hard. Uh, math is hard too. Anyway, AFA is a fantastic opportunity for you know uh, enlisted and and um, officer personnel from all over the country, all over the world, in fact, to come meet and talk all things Air Force, all things uh, national security. Um, warfare, whatever it might be, right? Now we can throw space in that into the mix. Um, and this year it's held just as it was two years ago um, in Orlando, and we'll be taking a trip over there as a detachment. Uh, we're all going to pile into a bus and, and bus over there on a Thursday. I'll give you a hint. Thursday is Lead Lab Day, so we won't be going to Lead Lab. Wink, wink. Um, again, that's not why you should go, but if you want another reason, there you go. Um, AF is, AFA is a fantastic opportunity. Um, you get to meet some some extremely cool people uh, just people that from all over the spectrum they do all different AFSCs um, you know all different jobs across the Air Force um, you know whatever you are interested in it's going to be there and if you like airplanes if you want to fly this is the place for you uh, Boeing uh, na name your favorite manufacturer right Boeing uh, Lockheed Martin Grumman Whatever it might be, right? All these companies are located here. They they bring a booth, they bring huge setups, and they bring it here. They bring their new technology, their new aircraft, their new engines, their new weapons. They bring them here and they show them off. It's a fantastic opportunity for you to see these in action. Um, obviously, you're not going to get to see weapons in action, unfortunately. Um, but they have pictures, they have videos. Come check it out. But another great thing about AFA is who you have the opportunity of listening to. They have some really cool keynote speakers. I have the schedule pulled up right here. While we're there on Thursday, March 3rd, 2022, uh, you know, mark your calendars, get registered online, uh, check your email. There was a, 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 a link sent out by Cadet Yake. There's some great information on there. Check it out. But we're actually getting uh, a briefing um, from the Honorable Frank Kendall, the 26th Secretary of the Air Force. Now, two years ago, um, General ex-General Goldfein was there speaking. Um, also, Charles Q. Brown, uh, before he was, uh, ch um, I'm sorry, Chief of Staff of the Air Force, uh, spoke as well. So there's some great people that are going to be speaking. Um, let's just go down the list a little bit. Um, we've got General Kenneth Wilsbach. I'm not sure if I'm saying that correctly. Um, Commander of PAC Air Forces, Pacific Air Forces. Uh, that'll be awesome to listen to him. He's speaking about China. Um, let's see who else we've got. We've got General Mark Kelly. Um, Air Combat Command, Commander of Air Combat Command, huge, again. Um, and we've got General Charles Q. Brown speaking, um, and also John Jay, who if, if anybody has read your, uh, your uh, FTM, he is uh, Chief of Space Operations. So, again, these people are going to be speaking about all things Air Force, all things national security, uh, world events, um, and again, with all the world events going on right now in Ukraine and Russia, there's going to be some huge things going on. Uh, there's a lot of movement over there. Um, you know, NATO is, is setting some things up. So make sure you're tuning into that. Make sure you're tracking that. March 3rd, get signed up. Make sure you can be there because it is an awesome opportunity. You get to get, and you get a lot of free swag. I know Cadet Beggs mentioned that. You get a lot of free swag. And again, I, go, I don't go for the swag, but it's pretty cool. Um, all right, switching up to Lime Cup. Lime Cup. Uh, it, you know, it's kind of a weird one because uh, we had it two years ago, but last year it was online. Um, and if any of the FTP slash POC now um, remember, it was uh, eSports. 
which again I'm an esports guy so that was great for me I know a lot of people are haters which is fine you have every right um, but again you know this year we're lucky enough to be able to be in person um, we're going over to UCF on February 26th uh, Kenneth McCloskey is is leading or heading up that um, that event and uh, UCF is hosting this year uh, you know it kind of switches around so every year a different um, university from Florida or a detachment in Florida I should say uh, host the Lime Cup competition um, and you've got soccer football volleyball and basketball I believe are the four events this year um, and we're looking to win we're looking to, to take the dub um, I'll probably be over there spectating I am not afraid to admit it I suck at soccer so I was not able to make the team um, I'm not that good I thought I was pretty good showed up and got smoked so if that's anything to say about the skill of the team I hope that's good because um, I thought I was pretty average uh, in my in my defense, the field was pretty small, but we're not going to talk about that. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. It, it was a great time. We had a good time at tryouts, but our team is stacked. A lot of club, university, or college players. So we're going to take home the dub, not only in soccer, but all of our sports. So make sure you're there. Make sure you're square. It's, it's going to be a great time. Um, moving into the last two topics, we've got AFOQT. Um, we've got two dates coming up, uh, 11 Feb, so that's this Friday, and 11 March, which is in about a month. Please be tracking on those if you need to take the OQT again. Um, I know for uh, a lot of the FTP, I'm not sure if you can still take it or not. Um, that's up to Captain Maynard and, and you guys to, to see how long ago you took it. Um, I believe it's still a 90-day grace period between attempts. And then um, for the IMT that are moving into next semester, just be tracking on what the OQT is. Um, it's basically a modified SAT that's modified for the Air Force. So you've got all the subjects that you hate, love and hate, I should say, uh, mainly reading and math. Um, we all hate math, don't we? Shouts out math. Not sure who created it, but love to, to meet them, shake their hand, you know, great people. Said no one ever. Um, but again, it, it's really not, it, I can't say it's not the hardest test. <laughs> Inside joke, I won't put it out to the public. I think most people already know. Um, you know, it's not the hardest test in terms of uh, subject area, but it is stuff that you probably haven't done for a long time. So do not underestimate this test. Um, get a study guide. Buy one of the books. It's going to be, a, it's gonna be a, a change. We'll put it that way. Uh, and there's a couple additional sections on there that you're probably not used to. So make sure you're studying up on that. Make sure you're tracking that. Um, and then the last thing I'm going to cover is kind of something I came up with myself. Um, something that I think would be interesting for for IMT and FTP alike to learn about. Um, and you know, we'll cover it real quick. It won't be too too long, but rated versus non-rated jobs in the Air Force. I think that's something that's confusing for a lot of people. Um, and I'm just gonna go over very briefly for maybe a minute or two, nothing too huge. Um, rated slots, rated jobs. We're talking, in essence, in summary, people that wear a flight suit. If you see somebody in a flight suit, chances are they have a rated position. Um, the four rated rated jobs in the Air Force are pilot, RPA, which is remotely piloted, piloted aircraft, um, CISO, combat systems officer. So think of, I know it's probably a bad example. I'll get yelled at for it, but Goose and Top Gun, kind of, kind of, sort of, um, but not the Navy, the Air Force. And then the last one is ABM, Air Battle Manager. Um, Air Battle Manager, the best way I can describe it is you're on the ground dictating what happens in the air. That's from my understanding, and if anybody has anything else on that, I'll, I'll try and tag some information on it, but um, that's the best thing I can come up with for it. Again, if you want to go rated, make sure that Cadre and your POC staff know ahead of time because there's some things you have to do before, you know, during your FTP year um, to let Cadre know that you want to go rated, and there's a couple different things you have to do. You have to take the TBAS, um, the test of basic aeronautical skills, um, you have to do that at some point. So just make sure you're tracking on that. Um, and then non-rated, again, is all the other jobs in the Air Force that um, are not associated with those four positions. So you're talking acquisitions officer, contracting, uh, force support, uh, maintenance officer. You could go down the list. I mean, there's a million, or not a million, obviously. Um, there's a ton of jobs in the Air Force. I mean, just countless jobs. Um, that I'm not covering. And I apologize if I didn't cover your specific job of choice. My, my fault. Um, but again, just make sure you're tracking on that. IMT, FTP. 
But other than that, I think that's going to wrap it up. I know we're, we're reaching about 20 minutes right now, I think. Um, so if this was too long, I apologize. Uh, your drive to school must be less than 20 minutes, which, again, is I guess is not that rare for a lot of people. We live close to campus. But, um, again, leave feedback, uh, whether it's in the comments or uh, in the IG comment box. Send it to my email, at 158 pa at gmail.com. Um, follow our socials, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok. Um, TikTok, uh, you know, it is what it is. We're going to uh, trying to get followers on there. Again, if you like TikTok, it's probably not going to pop up in your feed. Um, but we're going to try and get in the algorithm, right? We want to push our, our, our content. Um, but again, Instagram, Facebook, we're putting up a lot of good content right now. A lot of good pictures. we got some spotlights coming up. So make sure you follow them on those. YouTube, Debt158, RTC. Or Afrotsy debt one five eight. I apologize, um, but again, leave the feedback if you want this to keep going. Let me know. I appreciate all the support, all the help, um, and we'll talk to you all later.